of the last century to talk about wind power. The modern wind industry is very, very new. And my first slide uh, will show that. You want to hit it? Sure. Now, this may be a little busy and a little hard to understand. Do you have a pointer by any chance? No. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can point using... Uh, can you see that? Yeah. Okay. What we have here is wind generating capacity in the world. Yeah, that's why I have a world map. Okay. 1980, 85, 90, 95. And these circles are equivalent to the amount of capacity to produce electricity from wind. This, this circle right here is 2,500 megawatts. And that, the scale down here says that, 2,500 megawatts. So that's roughly what there was in Europe in 1995. Now, if you go back to 1980, you can, it's very hard to see anything because there was not much wind, you know, aside from, and the Persians invented wind power and, you know, I don't know, 2,000 years BC. But there was not a modern wind industry until the 1980s. It was created, it was created in California. And it was created because of policy in California said, you shall produce with wind power or with other renewables like geothermal. And if you do, we will pay you. We will make our utility companies pay you more money than for any other kind of power. That's what started the wind industry in the United States and in the world. Because look in 1985, you see how little that dot is and how big that one is. The United States had just about all of the wind power in the world. By 1990, things had changed a bit. We go up a little bit, the Europeans go up a lot. And then by 1995, it had, had, there's a reversal. And by 2002, a complete reversal with the big red part, 75% of all the wind power in the world is in Europe, primarily in Germany, Denmark, and Spain. The United States, 15%. Rest of the world, 10%. Now, that is what happened when we developed the wind industry and our policy that developed it all of a sudden went into abeyance and the Europeans continued theirs, especially in Denmark and especially in Germany. And that's why those two countries dominate in the production of wind turbines. This is also, uh, notice back here, that the total amount of wind in the world is 31,127 megawatts. Let me put that in perspective. A big nuclear power plant is generally 1,000 megawatts. 31 nukes. Or a small nuclear power plant like Dwayne Arnold is 600 megawatts. So 31,000 megawatts is a fair amount of electricity, produces a fair amount of energy. Now, if you go up to here, 2002 again, the number is the same, 31,000. And the growth of wind power has been like this, a very rapid rate of growth. 2002, about 31,000. 2005, three years later, almost 60,000. Three years later, 120,000. A doubling every three years. Very fast rate of growth. Now, the bottom one is how much new power is brought on each year. So 15,000 megawatts, 15 nukes, were brought on in year, year 2006. In the year 2009, we brought on 37,000, almost 40,000 megawatts. And if you look at last year, 2008, 120, we brought on a third as much as there was in the total world last year. Fast rate of growth. Here's some ways in which you look. The, the, the stuff's just coming out now. February is when we start talking about where we are in wind in the world. That's because the American Wind Energy Association, the European Wind Energy Association, the Global Wind Energy something, all put out their reports. And this is what the European Wind Energy Association said in February, a couple of weeks ago, they said that renewable power installations, the way in which you're going to produce electricity with plants, 
61% of that capacity came from renewable sources in Europe. 61. The EU power sector continues its move away from coal, fuel oil, and nuclear. Each of those technologies is decreasing. They're decommissioning more plants than they're bringing on. Europe is going green. The EU's total installed power capacity, uh, just, I mean, 820,000 megawatts versus 74,000 megawatts. So wind has about 9% of the total amount of capacity to produce electricity. Doesn't mean they're going to produce 9% of the electricity. They won't do that because a wind power plant will not produce as many kilowatt hours as a nuke or as a coal-fired power plant. Because why? Why wouldn't it? It's cheap. Why wouldn't it produce as much? The wind doesn't blow. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to make sure somebody's paying attention. The wind doesn't blow all the time. It blows maybe 30% of the time. 33% of the time is a good number for a capacity for wind power. This is something that came out of the uh, AWEA, the American Wind Energy Association, talking about the United States bringing on 10,000 megawatts, 10 gigawatts of power last year, 10 nuclear power plants worth of wind were brought on last year. And here is the global wind boom. This comes out of the, the global organization, the Global Wind Energy Council. United States brought on 10 gigawatts. China brought on 13. And China was not a player four years ago. They've decided that green energy is important to do something about their polluted skies, and they're going forward. So here's, here's another thing. All this is background before I start getting into why it happened and the policy behind it. So if you talk about the top 10 cumulative, the, the top 10 cumulative capacity, you have just a few countries. You have the US, followed by Germany, followed by China, Spain, India, and then you have Italy, France, UK, Portugal, and Denmark. The interesting thing about that, if I were to draw this line from here down to around there, I'd be talking about 75% of all of the wind in the world, cumulative now, is in one, two, three, four, five, maybe six countries. And another way of saying that, this portion right here, which would be a quarter, half of that quarter, like 12%, is the rest of the wind in the world. It is very particularized, a very small number of countries have wind power. When it comes to the new capacity here is China bringing on 13 gigawatts, the US with a big amount too. Again, if you talk about just one, two, three, four, five, maybe five states, that is three quarters of all of the wind that came on last year. That tells me, this is point number one, it is not the ability, it's not the resource, it's not where the wind blows that brings on new wind capacity. It's where you have policy, and that policy brings it forth. Now I'm going to make that point again and again and again. So if you get bored, okay. But I want to make sure you know where we're going. And this is what we believe we're going to be able to do. A report came out in 2008 uh, talked, uh, uh, that said that 20% of all the electricity generated in the United States could come from wind power sources by 2030. The goal then is 30, 300,000 megawatts, 300,000 megawatts, 300 nuclear power plants worth of wind capacity. The Europe has the same, very same goal by the same time, 2030. China, 150,000 megawatts, 150 gigawatts, but they're going to be there by 2020, they say. And given what they've done lately, I'd not be surprised if they were there before that. Now, here's two things. Two things you should challenge me with. You should never let anybody get away with saying, look at that curve, it's just going to the sky and nothing's going to stop it. Here's what the nuclear industry did. This is the nuclear industry. Now, the years you're not going to be able to look to see it, but this is 1956 down here when the first nuclear power plants went online in the United States and, and in Great Britain. Actually, the first one's in Great Britain. 
And then you have this incredible, you have this incredible, let me go backwards. How do I go backwards? I guess I, guess I go backwards this way. Then you had this incredible growth rate getting up to 423 reactors by 1989 but then we stop building nuclear power plants or the ones that are built are only those to replace the ones that have gone out of service so by 2007 we only had 439 megawatts 439 nuclear power plants consequently if I were looking in the sort of uh, around 1970 and said look at what's going on with nukes I could say the same thing I just said about wind so you need to make sure that that growth is going to continue to go forward and there are some constraints in making it go forward so just because something's going at uh, at this grade of growth doesn't mean it's going to continue second rule of 72 something you should all know all of you who are business folks probably know it already that if you want to know a doubling time how long it's going to take for your investment to double if your investment if you're getting seven percent interest your thousand dollars is going to be two thousand dollars in ten years and then in ten more years it's going to be double again to four thousand dollars and then it's going to double again to eight thousand dollars the rule of 72 says you take your growth rate you divide it into 72 and that tells you how many years it's going to take to double all right so how many 2006 we had 11,000 megawatts in the United States our goal is to go to 300,000 megawatts how many doublings is that you can count on your fingers if you like one doubling will take you from 11,000 to what 22 okay and the next is come on what's the next okay what's the next what's the next this is harder I got 170 something and the next okay how many doublings does it take to get from 11,000 to 300,000 takes five and if you're growing so fast that you double every three years that's 15 years we can be at a very large number of wind turbines in the world if we keep this rate of growth going that's what you just did five doublings and a new report that came out in June of last year about nine months ago from uh, the energy efficiency and renewable energy part of the Department of Energy says and this is too hard for you to read it says mainly that we see right now 300,000 megawatts of planned wind in the world in I'm sorry in the United States that this amount right here is how much wind is planned in the United States in what they call reliability regions you have to say we think that we're going to use your transmission lines for our new plant and in three years we're going to be brought be bringing it on and if you get rid of all the you know the, the stuff that you don't think is going to happen we've already got 300,000 megawatts this industry is growing very fast and this if you look at the cumulative wind capacity in the United States you find Texas with 9,000 megawatts and the second state is Iowa with 3670 we passed California where the industry started last year the United States has a lot of wind and in that a very small number of states have the majority and one of those states is Iowa Iowa compared to Denmark is very interesting because I Denmark again is the country that really started the industry after California kicked it off Denmark is known as the place where you produce wind energy because 20 percent of all their electricity comes from wind Iowa now has more capacity than Denmark and Iowa by the way that's the correct size Iowa is that much bigger than Denmark and there are a lot of great places to produce more electricity from wind in Iowa Iowa has now caught Denmark and it's also nearly equal to Denmark in the percentage of electricity that comes from wind power and this is something that Teresa and I did last year it's updated 
Uh, our report on a, a windfall of clean energy came out, oh, about uh, 10 months ago. And no one's coming out next week because there are new things to say. The first new thing is because we have uh, 2009 numbers, you get the numbers at the end of the year. So 2009 just ended. And this is the amount of new power brought on in Iowa. This is a cumulative number. So we're now up to 3,670 megawatts of wind just in the state of Iowa. And the Utilities Board, the Iowa Utilities Board, when Colin talked about regulatory, state regulatory agencies, that's ours. The Iowa Utility Board says that with the present wind capacity that we have right now, not counting the new wind farms that are going to be coming on in a few months, we're already 17 to 20 percent of the total amount of electricity brought on in Iowa next, this next year. Of all the energy that we produce, that is electricity, 20% is going to be from wind. We are Denmark. And the other thing about it uh, is that our prices have not gone crazy. You know, generally you say, okay, you can be green, but you know what's going to happen. Prices are going to go up and you're all, everybody's going to be sorry they ever decided to be environmentalists. Well, maybe. But up to now, there has not been that effect in the state of Iowa. And if you look at this lower number, this is six cents per kilowatt hour. This is average retail rates for wholesale, for industrial customers, for commercial customers, and from, for the residential customers as well. This is Iowa. The top is the rest of the, or the United States, including Iowa. We are low in relation, even though we have 20% of our electricity now coming from wind. And this is something John Jungward's probably going to talk about. These, uh, this is a slide from their, his agency. The, um, are you ready? Do you have another one? you have one kind of like it? Well, anyway, this is a nice, uh, a nice map of Iowa. The big circles are wind turbines, turbine farms. The ones that are lighter are the ones that haven't happened now. So most of you know that right here is where we are, down here. South of us could be a big wind farm isn't built yet, it's planned in Washington County. So the policy, last two slides. When you decide something's going to happen and you then make policy to make it happen, these are the kind of policies that government can do. It can do mandates, where it just comes in and tells companies, I don't care what you want to do, shut up. You're going to do this. It's a mandate. Iowa passed a mandate like that in 1983, the first mandate in the United States that said you shall buy wind power or buy renewable energy from suppliers in your state and pay them a fair price. That's pretty much what the law said. Now, it took a long time for that law finally to get into rules and then get out of court and all these other things, but by 1999 we had our first wind turbines in Iowa, mandated by that law. Since then, no mandate, and it's still lots more wind coming on. You can have something called a renewable portfolio standard or a renewable energy standard. Again, Iowa had the first one. There's a, many states have requirements. Uh, Minnesota, 25% requirement. Illinois, a 25% requirement that of our electricity, 25% will come from renewable sources by some year. They have different years, 2020, 2025. There might be a federal RES. There isn't anything now. Colin talked about the Energy Act of 1978. That started us on a, a path of saying we want to incentivize renewable energy. You can do that by well, the way California did with a feed-in tariff and saying, we don't care what you want to do, utility company. If somebody has a wind turbine produced electricity kilowatt hour, you pay them 11 cents for it, even though you're only paying 3 cents for everybody else. That is a mandate. Germany and Denmark became where they leading states because of those kind of feed-in tariffs. 
You can also do something called government purchases. Government buys a lot. We have a goal here at the University of Iowa that 10% of our, all, all of our electricity was, will come from renewable sources. And it's a mandate for the state for the same thing. You just say the state is a big purchaser, the state can do that acting like a government that just says go ahead and do things. Now you also have the market. And the market is another way of making things happen, probably a more nimble way, we think, of making things happen. And there, what you try to do is make the cost cheaper. You do something called a production tax credit, where every time you produce a kilowatt hour of electricity in the United States, you get a penny, roughly, for, from the federal government. It's actually 1.9 cents from the federal government, but it's only for 10 years. So it's equal to about a penny a kilowatt hour over the life of that plant. Iowa also has a production tax credit, although only for small power plants, distributed power, and Teresa's going to talk about that. You can also cut taxes. People like to cut taxes. Nobody likes to pay taxes if they're Americans. You can give property tax breaks, and we do. Uh, we give the counties the option of doing a property tax break. We also take sales tax off parts and equipment for wind turbines. That's another way you make the stuff cheaper. And the thing we're going to have to start doing pretty soon, or we're going to run into some of those constraints to stop that upward growth that is going in wind right now, is getting enough transmission. We are going to be running out of transmission soon. And here is my last slide. Iowa, we used to say, was 10th in the, war, in the United States in its ability to produce with wind, produce electricity with wind. That number changed last week to seventh. We have even more capacity than we thought we did. Yet we're the second biggest producer. The difference? Policy. Our policy that began the renewable energy industry in Iowa and the policy of states around us to have to have a certain portion of their electricity come from wind and other renewable sources. That means that Iowa is in a position not only to produce electricity from wind, from these wind turbines, but also, and I think Joe is going to talk about that, begin to manufacture the parts, the equipment, the towers, the blades, and the turbine generators that make that electricity. So, what I maintain is that policy has got Iowa to where it is today. And if it were not policy, you would not find this state being the leader. And we are. <laughs>